Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, I was reading through the news. I try to keep up with boxing. And I saw where uh, Marcus Maidana, who had hoped to fight the world's best, Floyd Mayweather, is instead obligated to fight Adrian Broner in a rematch. Because apparently Broner has certain contractual rights, which Broner is enforcing. I think Adrian Broner is making a big mistake, and I say that as someone who was dead wrong about their first fight. I thought Adrian Broner was going to walk down and walk through Marcus Maidana. I privately was expecting Broner to win by knockout, right? Then I saw the fight and realized how wrong my analysis was, right? Let me say this. That fight, in my opinion, wasn't the result of a bad night, right? That fight is not Adrian Broner having an off night and, you know, slipping up and losing. No, no, that fight, in my opinion, was structural. In other words, Marcus Maidana has certain advantages over Adrian Broner that would exist even if Adrian Broner is at his best. Right? Marcus Maidana, quite frankly, is the last person on the planet that Adrian Broner should fight next. Now understand, at the end of the day, boxing is really the entertainment business. The artist, otherwise known as the fighter, is king. Right? When the fighter wants a contractual clause enforced, even if everyone around that fighter thinks it's a bad decision, they have a vested interest in keeping the fighter happy. Obviously, just like every actor thinks they're Laurence Olivier, every fighter thinks they are Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? Adrian Broner, no doubt, has absolutely no question in his mind about his own greatness, right? He believes, I'm sure, that he could beat everyone within the area code of his division. As it is right now, he has been a multi-divisional champion. But understand, when you're young and in your 20s, the world looks a lot different than it does when you're older, in your 30s, 40s, or 50s. Right? When you're older, you realize that styles make fights. This idea of innate greatness is preposterous. Right? You also realize, too, that life is going to have some successes and some failures. Talk to the people who are older around you. You understand that failure is actually part of the growing process, part of the experience. When you're younger, you view, you view failure as simply having an off night. Let's talk about what Adrian Broner simply can't improve upon, certainly not in one training camp, right? Temperament. The pace at which a fighter fights. Adrian Broner is not going to go from a low volume guy to a high volume guy in one training camp. It's not going to happen. Right? I've read interviews where Adrian Broner is quoted as saying he was out hustled by Marcus Maidana as if he can just hit the gas and out hustle Marcus Maidana or even match the work pace of Marcus Maidana over 12 rounds. In my opinion, it's not going to happen. What I've found is that low-volume guys can pretend to be high-volume. 
for a few rounds. Right? They can say, okay, this round I'm going to throw this many punches. Right? They can go out there and they can do that. The problem is they're emptying their tank. Right? Stamina then becomes an issue. You're not going to match a James Kirkland, an Alfredo Angulo, or a Marcus Maidana in the volume department. These guys have spent their lives developing their game, right? What they can do in second gear, in terms of throwing heavy volume, it would take a low volume guy, his fourth gear, to match that output. I have little doubt that whatever Adrian Broner does in training camp, what Ever he does in training camp, Marcus Maidana is going to outwork him. The men have different temperaments, right? Marcus Maidana is accustomed to throwing a much higher volume of punches than Adrian Broner. Let me also point out, too, that high volume guys will run red lights. Adrian Broner can come in and you know fake like he's gonna throw a left hook right he can do feints and stuff like that some high volume guys will just run right through the feints right they won't even pay attention to that they're more interested in landing their punches they believe they get farther focusing on landing their punches and doing damage to you than on reading your feints. Let me also say too that Marcus Maidana has a gift that Rocky Marciano had. Right? Both guys have been down early in fights. Right? Marciano was down against Jersey Joe Walcott, for example. He was down against Archie Moore. Right? To the old guard watching my videos. Marcus Maidana was down against Victor Ortiz. He was down against Amir Khan. But Marcus Maidana is the kind of guy who gets off the canvas, right? He's like those zombies in those, you know, zombie movies where you shoot the guy, the guy's on the floor, you say, oh, thank God I got rid of him. Then he's back up and he's still coming at you. That's Marcus Maidana. Right? A lucky punch by Adrian Broner, and Broner has bang, especially that short uppercut. Even if it drops Marcus Maidana, Maidana's going to get back up. And Maidana's going to be throwing punches. And he's still going to throw more punches than Adrian Broner. Let's talk about some other things. The perception of the fight. I think it's important. I know theoretically a fight's supposed to be a fight. Judges are supposed to look at a fight the same way regardless of whether these guys have fought one time or three or four times. A round is supposed to be a round. It's supposed to be scored according to certain logistics. I think that's a fallacy. I think the perception of a fight governs how it's scored. Right, I'm talking about your perception of who the fighters are going into the fight. Right, I'll say this. What I found is that the favored fighter will get the close rounds with most judges. Right, it was almost impossible to beat Ali in the mid 70s because against, you name it, Ernie Shavers, a bunch of guys, Jimmy Young. These judges thought of Ali as great, thought of his opponents as challengers, right? And gave Ali most of the close rounds. Well, that dynamic changes when the challenger beats you. Then suddenly, judges go into the fight and they say, well, wait a moment. Who is the favorite here? Marcus Maidana. Even if he's not the betting favorite, judges are going to go in thinking of Marcus Maidana differently than they thought of him before the first fight. Maidana right now 
is the guy in the fight wearing the belt. Right? He's the champ. So think about the bad combination. The judges may well give Maidana the close rounds. And Maidana is the higher volume guy. So judges are going to watch around. Maidana's going to throw more punches than Adrian Broner. And of course, he's going to be viewed as the guy who beat Broner the first time. Right? As an aside, and I know my next statement is going to be controversial. Let me just say that this logic would also apply, in my opinion, to a rematch between Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley, right? Don't fool yourself. Whoever you thought won the first fight, understand there's an official result. This is almost like politics, right? Here in the United States, remember the perception of George W. Bush as we were counting the ballots in 2000. You get to 2004 and he was viewed as having legitimacy, right? Won that election. And so my point is, Marcus Maidana won the first fight, right? Those close rounds are gonna go to him on the judges' scorecards in the rematch. I know that's not the way it's supposed to be, but if you're a better you know what I'm talking about. We're not here trying to fit in with some corporate narrative, some mainstream corporate narrative. We're here trying to beat the casino. Okay, I don't have time for BS in talking about how fights are scored. The field isn't level. It's tilted a little bit toward the favorite. Just ask guys like Sergio Martinez who go into other guys' countries, right? Came to the United States, fought Paul Williams, beat Paul Williams except on the judges' scorecards that first time, right? Had to close the show the second time to leave the arena knowing that he would receive the victory he had earned, right? One man's opinion, right? Well, let's just go further, too. As you walk down the street today, I want you to just pay attention to your balance, right? Balance is something that takes years to develop. When I'm watching a fighter, saw a great fight yesterday, Zaire Rahim, right? Think Frankie Gavin, think Pernell Whitaker. These are guys who bend, right? Terrence Crawford, right? These are guys in the ring who can duck punches, right? They, they are vertical. They're up and down in addition to moving around the ring, right? That's Floyd Mayweather. He can get low. Right? Understand, that takes years to develop. Just imagine being in a gunfight, the bullets are flying. You have to make literally spontaneous decisions, right? Because your very consciousness hangs in the balance. So the guy might knock you out. And you're just already wired after years of practice. Years of thinking it through. You're wired to be Pernell Whitaker. You're wired to just dock, right? You see bombs coming. And you're confident enough in your balance where you can just duck under the punch, right? And you set up angles where you're not just standing upright. You're actually ducking, right? You're bobbing and weaving. Joe Fraser, right? You're, you're ducking down. That's not Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner's upright. He doesn't duck down that often. Do you really think that he's going to learn to duck in one training camp? Do you? I don't. Maybe he comes out and ducks for the first round or two. How long is that going to last? Three minutes? Six minutes? It's not going to last all fight. You know, that's like expecting Amir Khan to suddenly come out and start ducking. That's not who these guys are, right? These guys in fights are going to revert to who they are. And understand who they are has taken years to create. Let's also talk about foot speed. Even before the Maidana fight, when I was analyzing Pauli Malignaggi against Adrian Broner, 
I made comments here online that said, hey, Adrian Broner doesn't have great foot speed. Right again, foot speed relates to balance. Right? You know, how fast can you move keeping your game together? Right? All of us can run 10 feet, right? But the question is, can we travel the 10 feet while boxing? Right? The boxing part's the important part, because if your game falls apart in the ring, you might end up on your back. Right? Adrian Broner is not suddenly going to develop blinding foot speed. It's not going to happen. Right? It takes a while. You look at a Floyd, understand this is a guy who thought about foot speed early on and then cultivated that skill. Right? Adrian Broner was not going to develop, you know, significantly faster foot speed in one training camp. Let me close by talking about perhaps the biggest problem he has. You know, before the first fight, a fight in which Broner was a big favorite, it was unclear whether Marcus Maidana could hurt Adrian Broner. Broner had a great defense. He has a great defense. And we've seen great defensive fighters, guys like Floyd Mayweather, you know, go long stretches without even looking hurt in the ring. That's the aura that Adrian Broner had going into the first fight. Well, now there's a new dynamic. Now Marcus Maidana knows that he can not only hurt Adrian Broner, he knows that he can drop Adrian Broner. He did so multiple times in the first fight, right? You have a slugger with knowledge that he can knock down his opponent. That's a big difference. Any reluctance Marcus Maidana may have had in jumping inside in the first fight, that's gone now, right? Maidana knows there's a little tenderness on Adrian Broner, right? Broner, Broner can be knocked down. So, you can imagine, Madonna is probably going to spend a huge portion of his camp remembering the punches that dropped Broner, looking on tape with even more confidence than he had before the first fight. In my opinion, you add it all up. And keep in mind, I'm certainly not a Marcus Madonna homer. I picked Broner before the first fight. But you add it all up. And in my opinion, I'm expecting more of the same. I'm expecting Marcus Madonna to win the rematch. I'm guessing there's some seasoned voices in Broner's entourage who are privately telling him, you don't want to fight this guy again. And I'm guessing Broner is running red lights because Broner is convinced in his 20s in his own immortality. Right? This fight to me is a big mistake. I like Marcus Maidana in the rematch. I would hedge it with Broner by KO. Not decision. Right? Because I think he's going to get out worked by Maidana. Let me talk about one more thing. It's, it'll be controversial, but whatever. You know, Broner's not loved by boxing fans. We don't want to see him win. Right? Understand, this is very different than, let's say, a Ray Leonard. Right? Um... You know, with Ray, you were rooting for him. He was the underdog. You were hoping that he would pull a rabbit out of the hat. He was loved, right? No, Broner's in a different zone. He's in the zone where Ali was. 
for the listed rematch. What I want people to do is go back and pull up that tape. I know it's hard to believe. Just listen to the fans when they enter the ring. Believe it or not, Mr. Popularity for the Ali Liston rematch with Sonny Liston. Ali gets booed on his way into the ring. Now I'll say this, understand. Some big time villains today in boxing. Or guys who used to be villains. Um, Bernard Hopkins, believe it or not, when he was the middleweight champion, wasn't a fan favorite. He was a villain. Floyd Mayweather today <coughs> is a villain. I'd say more people show up to see him lose than to see him win. That's where Adrian Broner is right now. Here's what that means. If the fight's close, Broner loses. Right? Understand that. This is different than Leonard Hagler, where you're rooting for Ray Leonard. So the fight's close, the fighter you like gets the nod. Right? As long as it's plausible for the fighter you like to win the fight, he gets the nod. Right? It's different here. Broner is really swing, um, swimming upstream. Understand, he's unpopular. Don't confuse notoriety with adoration. Right? He's not adored. So if the fight is close, Broner loses. Let's go one step further. This has nothing to do with Broner. I can tell you, I'm old school. I believe that if you're going to take the belt from the champ's waist, you've got to beat the champ, right? It can't be some close fight. It isn't where you get 101, the champ gets 100, and you take the belt. Back in the 70s, we thought you had to clearly beat the champ. Right? I mean, you know, we're not giving belts away. You've got to earn the belt. If it's debatable, then the champ should keep his title. Longtime viewers here online know I'm still sore. And I'll admit it, I'm still sore. That Daniel Gill lost his belt to Darren Barker when he got the only knockdown in the fight, and the rest of the fight looked close to me. Well, understand the roles have switched. I don't care who Adrian Broner sees when he looks in the mirror. He's no longer the champ at 147 pounds. If he is going to take Marcus Maidana's title, he's going to have to beat down Maidana. Right? He, he can't go with a photo finish. It has to be a clear finish. How's he going to get that against a guy who just knocked him down twice? Who dominated him on the scorecards? Who had the crowd behind him during their first fight? Just listen to the crowd as you watch the video of the first fight. Who are they cheering? And I'm talking about especially in like the sixth round, the seventh round, the eighth rounds, as the fight unfolded. That crowd became a Marcus Madonna crowd. That's a big hurdle. That's a huge hurdle. Right? I think it's too huge a hurdle. Especially when Broner can't match Madonna in punch output and doesn't bend and doesn't have the foot speed to move away from Madonna or to smother Maidana. I like Maidana in the rematch hedged with Broner by KO. Broner has a puncher's chance. I don't think it's great. I expect Maidana to win the fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Maybe this situation is fluid and maybe 
Broner and his entourage is going to figure out that this is seriously the worst possible opponent for him to fight. Even if Broner fought, let's say, Floyd Mayweather, there wouldn't be the familiarity for Mayweather that there is for Marcus Maidana, who just fought Broner. Right? There'd be questions on whether Floyd Mayweather could drop Broner. There are no questions for Marcus Maidana. Right? So, there are times in boxing when a rematch clause that your representatives got for you because their job is to get you the best deal possible isn't worth enforcing. This is kind of like Boutte Carl Froch. Right here, Broner needs to regroup and retool. Right? There's a reason why some rematches don't happen for 18 months to 24 months. Because you need to add certain things to your game, and they take time to add. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.